my name is Jackie Wyrock, and thank you for joining us here today on another episode of You and Your Health. We are so fortunate to have Barbara Lucchese join us today. Thank you, Barbara, for coming out and joining us. You have been such a delight and a wonderful addition to my life. You have um, helped me in time of uh, great need for creating some wellness in my body and that was through massage and talk and um, direction and introductions and it's just unfolding more and more every day so um, nice. tell me <laughs> about you and your beginning to work in the field of wellness and what what prompted this uh, well, major career switch for you? Oh yeah, huge, huge, <laughs> huge. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was uh, I was working as an actress in Hollywood, and uh, yeah, I just uh, all the choices that I was making, I still wasn't happy, and I didn't understand this elusive happiness. What did it mean to be happy? Mm -hmm. And uh, I was getting massage since professional massage since I was 19, and uh, but I just I felt something needed to change and I didn't know what it was, and so I just completely left Hollywood. And um, but I didn't leave California. I went down to my dad's in San Diego and okay. just enrolled in a massage school with not the intention of becoming a massage therapist, but with the intention of learning about my body mind. Okay. Talk more about body mind. Oh, that's a great question. Um, I'm not an authority on it, but I can explain it as I know it. Okay. So body mind meaning how um, there's actually a field called psychoneuroimmunology. I wanted to get that degree, but I thought it would be too long to introduce myself as a psychoneuroimmunologist. I said, scrap that. <laughs> so <forget it. laughs> it's like body-mind. So basically, it's the same thing. It's how the mind affects the body and the immune system as a psychoneuroimmunologist. Body-mind, same thing. How the, the choices that we make with our body affect our mind and how the choices we make with our mind affect our body. It's symbiotic. Um, chicken or the egg thing, you know. I, right. Um, what comes first, I don't know. Like I said, this is kind of beyond my pay grade, but I can only speak with what I know. Um, but I know, I, uh, I felt that the choices that I was making, there was some sort of correlation to whatever I was doing wasn't making me happy. I was getting temporary pleasures and temporary pains, but there was no kind of consistency. And so through learning, um, through different exercises that we would do in the massage school, like one time they had us lie on the floor, it looked like a crime scene, and they had these big sheets of paper and they had you um, chalk outline your body, mm -hmm. and then you had to um, write little snippets about mm, your toe or your knee or your eye or whatever, your belly button, and make a connection with those parts of your body, like maybe you know, you hated your knees, say you, ha you felt you had ugly knees. Well, you know, maybe you were made fun of or whatever, and then you had to have this dialogue, and it sounds very new agey and whatever, but it was a way, there were different exercises for you to connect with your body so you weren't disowning it, and then therefore, when we disconnect from parts of our body, I have found, and I've seen in my, my clients over the years, that we just don't take care of it. It's kind of like a plant. It needs to be nurtured and cared for. And so if somebody doesn't like their feet, whatever, you know, then problems will start happening. You'll get bunions, you'll get toes starting to grow like this, or then at some point you might even have to have surgery. So, um, which is kind of what happened to me. <laughs> Tell me more. <laughs> so, um, at the same, around the same time that I left acting, um, I never left it here. I just left the business because the business was crazy. You're shaking your head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so when I left that, and then I started to go into massage. Um, then, as I started to uncover things, I started to realize that I had. Um, almost like a hatred for myself. Uh, it was very deeply rooted. I didn't realize how much I just didn't like myself, which is strange, you know? Um, and um, 
they there's a thought about how the each part uh, part of your body represents something, mm -hmm. um, kind of a um, metaphor. Yeah, mm -hmm. I start. I have a manuscript that I started writing called "Body as a Metaphor." You know, like when we say, "Oh, um, you know, the weight of the world on the shoulders," mm -hmm. and then the person has chronic shoulder problems, right? Or they keep saying that person's a pain in the butt, and then they have hemorrhoids. Wow. You know, or just think of how we use those metaphors all the time, right? So anyway, the breasts are nurturing, right? And nurturing, nurturing. And so I had a lot of issues with nurturing, giving and receiving uh, when I was younger. And then um, uh, I just, I didn't like my, my body. I just didn't really care for myself. And I was way out of balance. How so? Um, with, when I was working in the film industry, I just was, um, I didn't do drugs and alcohol, but I did alcohol and caffeine. Okay. And so, and not just that, in and of itself, doing, having a glass of wine or having a coffee is not, you know, nothing is, it's, it has to do with the, po the amount right. that you're doing, right? And my mind was out of control in that I didn't have balance, I didn't have a sense of groundedness. In Eastern medicine, they talk about, um, um, and in, in Ayurveda, which I guess also can be considered Eastern medicine. When I when I say Eastern medicine, I'm thinking of like acupuncture and Chinese medicine, right. but India is also considered the East. Um, they have concepts of like people have heard kapha and vata and pitta. Right. Um, so I w vata is very airy and they're doing lots of things. They're very creative. So in balance, they're very creative. Out of balance, their heads in the clouds and they're very moving to there's no ground it's just air it's like a wind uh, how do you say tornado mm -hmm. yeah um, then um, pitta is fire so when fire is out of balance it's just scorches everything in sight so that's persons uh, that kind of out of balance they're they're very angry all the time so I'm clenching my fist before the <laughs> word comes right so body mind that our bodies know before sometimes we can even articulate the words yeah. right kapha is just very lethargic, and uh, that's out of balance. Okay. In balance, um, a vata person has all these creative and great ideas, but they are, um, but they're balanced with them, right? Um, they're not hydroplaning all over the place. Right. Pitta has got fire. They'll get things done. You can cook with fire. You don't have to scorch the whole field, right? Torch the house. You can cook with it. You can do something constructive with it. And then kapha, um, instead of going into you know some sort of ice cream comatose, you can be slow and steady. That energy is necessary for slow and steady. So they have these ancient wisdoms with Ayurveda. You can do, I, I'm not an Ayurvedic specialist, but um, we'll see if we can find someone who is yes. to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Chinese medicine also has a sim similar categorical thing where they break them up into, you know, this is your body mind type based on your behavior and your physical body and uh, bring it back into balance and so um, I learned some of this before uh, pre-cancer a mm -hmm. little bit I was uh, learning like okay and then I started to discover I'm, I'm really out of balance um, I'm just drinking too much coffee um, to wake up and do things mm -hmm. and it's almost like a self-medication without the medication right and um, I just felt this, I was caught up in this turbine of go, 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 go. Mm -hmm. But the sun doesn't shine in the sky 24 hours a day. The moon comes out as well, too. It's not summertime, you know, 365 days a year, right? Unless you're in L.A. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> Unless you're in L.A. Yeah, well, <laughs> even that. You know, they have June gloom, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> and they, so, I mean, there's... So there's a balance, there's always something, even on the equator, you know, or when there's the, what do you call it, the, up in the, the, moon? the poles. No, oh, not the, the moon, not that far. <laughs> Antarctica. And yeah, when you're at one of the poles. Okay, but you still, there is still some downtime, right. though it may be small. There's still something there. There's still a restorative time. And um, like this winter, I loved looking at that. And it's always, every winter in the Northeast, it's so wonderful to me because I look out and I'm like, it looks like there's nothing going on. And then that first crocus or something comes up and you're like, 
Look at that. Yeah. And so that, to me, is a metaphor for something amazing and then can also be destructive or constructive, depending how you look at it. For me, it looked like there was nothing going on. And then um, a couple of days before Christmas in 1999, they went, not you've got mail, but you've got cancer. And I was like, ooh. But I kind of knew that it was coming. I was only 29. I, I kind of knew it was coming. How did you know? Um, it had been, let's see, 1999, so I had been studying massage for two years mm -hmm. and, and actively working as a therapist. And I was doing a lot of meditation. And um, so you'd think that would have brought me back into balance. Yeah. Um, my life had been so far out of balance that I was just starting to get righted. And I, I liken this to something that, okay, everybody's got an attic or a garage or a basement. Mm -hmm. So if you're throwing stuff back in there and not cleaning it for, you know, 20 years, and then finally one day you're like, I'm going to clean it. And then you open it and you're like, oh no, not today. <laughs> Not today, uh, maybe, yeah, okay, well, let me just tackle this much and just say, you know, we'll keep going with the metaphor, you know, every year is, say, another, you know, square foot or whatever mm -hmm. or another box, and you know what happens every time you open up that box, oh, nostalgia, or what about this, or oh, God, or cry, or vomit, or whatever it is, just bringing up stuff. Right. And so that's what happened, and so... I didn't know if I was going to live or die because they said uh, you had five years. I had five years to live, uh, based on the severity and the the speed of it. Wow! I was an aggressive breast cancer, and um, they before they found it, they wanted to turn me away. They said you're 29. It's fibrocystic. Don't worry about it. I'm like, uh, I've been meditating. I, I didn't tell them this, but I'm like, I. I kind of prayed for a change. I prayed for something to happen. I actually literally said. I don't know who or what's out there. At the time, I was kind of floundering for some sort of faith in something. Mm -hmm. In addition to myself, faith in myself, I was also looking for that too. I was like, I don't know, I feel something, but I don't quite know what it is. Whatever it is, please hook me up, help me out, but accelerate my growth process and get me out of here, is exactly what I said. And I had just had an exam, and within two weeks, there was something in my Cosmo or L. They were doing this. They just started, I think, the October Breast Cancer Month mm -hmm. campaign. And my friend's like, oh, look, you got to do this. And I was like, oh, OK. And I was like, oh, I have a lump. And it happened like two weeks after I made this prayer. And I had just gotten an exam and fully checked because where I was working, I was going to give up my insurance. And wow. So that started a 10-year a, a journey. I was on that, that track for 10 years. It was and fun. Clearly, you've healed. Clearly, I what? You've healed. I've healed. So, uh, my friend Wendy, with mm -hmm. whom you interviewed the other yeah. day, Lucid Path, we had this conversation about um, uh, the difference between healing and recovered, right? Yeah. So, yes, I have healed. So, whether I've recovered too, I don't know. I mean, cancer can come back at any time to anyone, who knows? Right. Um, but so far, I've definitely outlived that five-year death sentence yes, that they say, because <laughs> I'll be 47 soon. So, cheers to that. Every day is a gift. It is, isn't it? It really is. Those cliches are... It's true. Yeah. They're there for a reason. Yeah, yeah. So, you are continuing on the path of healing mm -hmm. and helping other he others heal. If I can. And you do that with your massage. And what other modalities is there? I mean, I know when I was introduced to you, there were different types on your website of uh, massage uh, options, treatment, um, the hot stones, mm -hmm. you bring that in, the yeah. aromatherapy, you bring that in. I mean, just talking, you, you really help get to know your clients very well in a very short period of time and create a space that is um, so conducive to healing. Thank you. So tell me how that all transpired. The space or yeah, the... Yeah, everything. Ooh, wow, okay. That's a great question. Um, 
You mean how I integrate everything? Well, um, yeah, what I, what I do is I call it in integrative visage, which that's kind of like an all-encompassing word, right? Mm -hmm. um, I consider myself really a facilitator of other people's healing. I, I really don't, I don't call myself a healer. I don't consider myself a healer um, because I feel that mm, things are kind of like, I call it the 33 and a third percent rule. <laughs> <laughs> so this is my own barbarism. <laughs> so I have fun. I make stuff up. Tell me more. <laughs> so my 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 rule is this: that um, thirty-three and a third percent is my skill. The thirty-three and a third percent is the receptivity of the person coming in to see me, and the other thirty-three and a third percent is who knows God, karma, luck, whatever you want to call it because I, st I started thinking about what is it that actually heals someone, right? Right. Why is it that you could have the best surgeon in the world and the person really wants to live and they die anyway? What happens there? There's something there, but you still have to have a skilled person and you still have to have the reason. Like those components, there seems to be causes and conditions that need to kind of fit together. So, so with that said, um, I... I do my best every time to show up, and um, I find that everybody has different things that they need. So for example, if we'll just stick with the Ayurvedic model, um, so a person who's very airy needs some grounding, mm -hmm. right? So that they can make their, uh, their creative ideas, give it some weight, right, and steadiness because other than that, the Nevada person will be all over the place, right? Right, And they need a little fire to cook it too. So ideally a business would have someone who's a Vata and Kapha and a Pitta. You would have all three. So how I would address that, someone comes in and they're all over the place, um, I might work on their head first and calm them down, or their feet, bring them out more grounding, yeah? Um, maybe use some more hot towels to bring some, some heat. If a person has too much heat, right, then the last thing they want is hot stones okay. and hot towels. Right. So maybe I'll bring in some aromatherapy. And they get that going on too. Maybe I'll do some percussion, you know. Um, if a uh, kapha comes in and they're very, you know, like, I don't know, I've just been really tired and I can't move. Okay, great, lie down on the table. And I just start doing percussion to get the movement going. So it's just, it's, it's very fun for me. I was in India for a month and um, I got to really see a whole different world. Um, I traveled to um, all over India and then I got to stay at a monastery for about three weeks and massage some of the older monks there. And Wow! Yeah, that was really lovely. And mm, they, of course, didn't have massage before. And then I just, you know, you, 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 in India, you just grab whatever you can get. So I had like this bucket and then we he they heat up water in the fire thing outside. And then they have a little canister and then you pour it in to temper the water. And I just like grabbed a thing of soap and just doing their feet. And I thought it was so um, beautiful to me to see yeah. that not only they appreciated it, but then how important the feet are and then in grounding in that element. So, and then I also made some mistakes too. I mean, there are some older monks that um, their back hurt. And so I thought, okay, well, let me see if I can work on their back. Mm -hmm. um, and just even to lie down, to get into a position, maybe lying where I could work on their back, they couldn't do it. And so there's like three or four people trying to get them to get back up again. I'm like, just get them out of the position. No, 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 you know, it's okay. We'll just work on their feet or whatever I can do, you know? Wow. And so I learned that it's so crucial to be in the moment. And I think one of the reasons, again, body-mind, is that, you know, why do we lose the moment? Well, either we're bored, we don't, want, we don't want to feel. That's really the bottom line. Being in the present moment, I think, is uncomfortable. Mm. Because, oh, I have to feel bored. I have to feel scared. I have to feel sad. I have to feel happy. Whatever it is, you know, or I have to feel uncertainty. Or I have to feel embarrassed. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. But when we sit with it, we're just like, Hi. <laughs> and so, so that's what I do. I just kind of, I show up and I just go, 
hi human. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea why you're here. I have no idea why I'm here. So how cool is that? Let's see. Let's let's see. Let's discover together. And so if I can facilitate a person's journey, because you're with you more than I'm with you. Right. <laughs> and so really you're in charge. So all I can do is just maybe help to make you aware of some things that you might not have been aware of before. Just like my teachers um, help me. Because I think then there's a weight to that. Mm -hmm. When you discover it on your own, rather than someone telling you. Right. Right? It's like that light bulb goes off, ah, and you own that. Yeah, you're like, oh, that's why I keep getting headaches, because I keep hitting my head. <laughs> <laughs> or I walk like this, and oh, okay, or I'm slouching, I'm in this position, no wonder this is happening. Yeah. Or I'm not, I'm not taking the time to eat properly and focus on my food. I think a lot of food, pro I mean, I'm not a food addiction specialist, whatnot, but I know for myself, how many times have you eaten a meal and been like, I'm still hungry? Or did I just eat? Mm. And then how many times have you eaten a meal and you've been like, wow, this tastes amazing. You could taste almost every single layer and burst of a tomato and whatever, right? Because yeah. you, you're present. And so that's, that's my goal is for my own self to stay as centered and present as, as possible. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things that um, Norma, who's the owner of the Falls General Store, so my practice is upstairs of um, Falls River Yoga. And um, we've been talking about me doing some mindfulness meditation classes up there. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've been doing yoga personally for 40 years. Wow. Even though I know I'm um, 40. No. <laughs> That's amazing. Isn't that possible if I'm only 21, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, and... Um, but that, it sounds amazing, but really, it's like something you come to, come back. And yoga is not just physical posture asanas, right? Like, I'm not ripped and cut and right. things like that, like some amazing other yogis and yoginis are. And my mind is still, can go all over the place, but it's about always coming back, coming back, coming back. And so ever since going to India in January, it's made me even more aware of how important it is to stay when people say, oh, stay centered, what does that mean? Stay centered here. Move from here. Stay grounded in here. And it's okay to feel because it passes. It's like a storm. It's like mm -hmm. a Florida storm. And all of a sudden, there's a rainbow from the rain. Wow, okay, cool. So what was the greatest experience that you had in India? Going. Yeah. <laughs> Every day I would wake up and I literally, no joke, I would say, I'm in India. I hardly slept, literally, um, through, through just a mixture of being in a new place mm -hmm. and um, just doing what I was doing. Um, but the whole journey was just, it was great to see other people's perspectives and the freedom of mind in my journey. Mm -hmm. Everybody has different journeys wherever they go, right? It's like a picture says a thousand words to right. a thousand different people. Well, this was my experience of my own particular journey. And I, the people that I happen to spend time with, they seem to have more space hmm. in between the thoughts. That's the best way that I can articulate it. And so therefore that space created a sense of relax, relaxed, Mm -hmm. this sort of freedom to be participant and observer and not react. Ah. That spaciousness, which is what I had been looking for. And things would come up. So the greatest thing that I learned there was about myself. So I'm very narcissistic, you know, it's all about me, right? <laughs> it's like, how, show me more about me so that I can see you. That's how I'm looking at it, you know. I, I, I just, I felt this expansiveness. I was able to not be so afraid to connect, if that makes sense. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Learn more about generosity. I learned more about joy. Learn more about love. I learned more about having fun. That's so important. We forgot how to play in the society, right? Yes, we have. We've become all wrapped up in fear of what's going to happen. Well, then once you have that, and you would think, 
having that cancer experience to me would have right. flipped the switch. It helped flip the switch to want to figure out about life, but I still didn't have the sense of wanting to play. Right. I actually went to Camp Tecumta. Do you know about that? Mm -mm. Okay. Uh, maybe this is a great place in the islands, okay. North Hero, somewhere around there. Right. And it's a camp for children that have cancer. I oh. think it's terminal cancer. And they invited me to come up to be one of their massage therapists for the, um, actually that's where, oh, not in this one, but the other, there's another picture of me doing mis chair massage. They had a first annual like Mother's Day retreat for the mothers of the children, or the cancer patients, right? Because the moms are... Caregivers have the hard, hard, hard part too. Especially the mom. Yeah. And especially if their child is gonna die, like yeah. it's terminal. And so there they are, they just said, for the moms you're taking care of for this night or the weekend, whatever it was, and they had everything catered, they had spa day, they had massage therapist reflex, the whole shebang. And so I went up and um, they invited me for the first annual retreat thing that they had there. And so I was doing chair massage and all these moms, you know. And there I was, you know, and, and I had avoided doing any kind of cancer related um, workshops, volunteering, anything like that, because it, it it still was very close mm -hmm. to me, and I and I hadn't really processed it. And I remember doing that, and uh, I took my break. And it, they have um, build different buildings with different uh, like the building that we were in was like the main building with for the food and everything and, mm -hmm. and uh, fireplace and so forth. The other building was for um, what do you call it, like a rec house, mm -hmm. they pool table games, all that stuff. So I remember walking in the the pool table and game rec house, and I thought wow, these kids play. I never played when I was sick. Ah. They never emphasized the importance of playing. And I'm gonna cry now, I think about it, it makes me very teary-eyed. When I went to India, they took time to eat, three meals a day, and snacks in between, tea, it's always important to nourish your soul, eat, eat, make sure you eat. Then rest. Oh, okay. See, that's the time. We're going to sleep now. I'm like, where's everybody going? It's noon. Well, we're going to sleep. You can too if you want. Good night. What? <laughs> and then they would just take a nap for like an hour or whatever. It's hot there too. So, and then you do your work. You work when you work. You rest when you rest. And that's it. There's a balance there. So where was the play? And then the play was after dinner. And I, I'm watching these monks, these young monks, they're playing hacky sack. Mm. Where they would find whatever they could, you know, skipping stones or whatever. And um, they would play around dusk after dinner, in between dinner and studying again in the evening. And it took me back to when I was in school. And my grandmother would be like, do your schoolwork first, you know, then go out and play, then eat, and then, you know, if you need to study more, you can. But I just remember sitting back and just watching these kids, and I have a picture of it, and actually I have a video, and I thought, wow, where did, where did we veer off in the society, or at least maybe other people have it, but where, where did I veer off? Mm -hmm. Where did I forget this balance? I think that's a great way to end. Thank you, Barbara. You're welcome. And thank you, viewers, for tuning in to You and Your Health. Let's remember to play. It will help our health. It will help our health physically, emotionally, and spiritually. So, yeah, go out and play, okay? Until next time, namaste.